guys, so we've got another episode here where we're going to do a mock test with Jess. Jess, yeah. <laughs> now, Jess has been learning with another instructor before. Um, she had a gap because of lockdown, and then she has been learning with another instructor uh, for a few hours since. Yeah. Um, if you sort of just give a breakdown of your driving, how many hours and... Okay, so good. in September I did 20 hours, but I didn't progress much. So I stopped, I was on lockdown with my, I was just practicing with my dad and my sister. And now I have a new instructor who's way better. Well, I say that. Yeah, that's fine. He's <laughs> <laughs> way better and um, I've just been on loads of different roads. And yeah, this is my first mock test. I just want to see where my weaknesses are so I can practice it before my real test. Perfect, yeah. So basically Jess has been driving this car for about sort of 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, very different to very very different yeah <laughs> noisy yeah faster no numbers on the gear stick yeah my gear lever has no numbers on it at <laughs> all so that's kind of thrown her a little bit um but otherwise general drive it's okay yeah, yeah. exactly um adapted really quick very smooth on clutch control um elements so bringing the clutch up really nicely on the gear changes and on the pullaways um couple little habits that Jess has got um so yeah self-proclaimed coaster <laughs> um we've done a little bit of uh sort of exercise just to try to remedy yeah. that um and that seemed to have got you understanding yeah. the physics of it yeah obviously that might still creep in because it's a habit at the end yeah. of the day it takes time to get used to new techniques um especially in a new car as well um but you've adapted quite quick to that yeah okay so what we're going to do is another test route one that you haven't seen already um it's going to be not particularly a challenging route as in context to the types of road mm -hmm. there is a couple junctions though which is notorious for catching people out okay um just getting attacked by a fly there <laughs> <laughs> Um, junctions, okay. So, yeah, there's a couple of junctions which do catch people out on this okay. particular route. So, definitely a route to look in its entirety because a lot of people do get caught, to say the least. Okay? So, same rules apply as always. The mm -hmm. test is going to last for 38 to 40 minutes. During mm -hmm. that time, we're going to do one maneuver plus possibly the emergency stop. Okay. Uh, we're also going to do some independent driving as well. Yeah. Um, if I say nothing, assume straight I want you to ahead. go straight or to follow the road sign. Um, but if you're not sure, you can ask me to repeat and I can do. Okay. Okay. Um, we won't do the show me, tell me questions because you don't know this car and you haven't checked the video, I don't think, for, or have you? Have you seen the video for the show me, tell me's on this car? If you haven't, it's not a problem. I don't know show me's, but I know tell me's. That's cool. That's not a problem. So we can yeah. do one of the tell me questions then. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how would you check that your power steering is working before a journey? Okay. So there's two checks that you can do. Okay. So one of them is gentle pressure on the steering wheel while mm -hmm. the engine is on. Will yeah. show like no school movement, and then like steering just after moving, just after moving off, will show immediate. Will show you immediately that it's working. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. so there yeah. or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so it's just basically a case of turn the steering wheel, and it should be nice and. Should it Loose. be like? Yeah, yeah exactly please, please. that's it so if it's really stiff there's a problem if it's okay. nice and light it's good right. um perfect okay so whenever you're ready start the car okay. and we'll go for a drive all right jess's shoulder checks here are really good very obvious we're off to a good start Turn right, third exit, and very clear mirror checks as well.
roundabout to hit the turn left first exit. Jess hasn't checked the right mirror. She checks her rear view mirror often enough on the approach that she knows what's going on, so it would not be a fault. does a very good right mirror check here just to make sure that it's safe before emerging. Well done. As you can see, Jess doesn't check her right shoulder again before pulling away, so this would be a driver fault for moving off safety. The sign on the left is a variable speed sign. So during school run times, that sign may be illuminated to show it's a 20. But as it's not illuminated, it still remains a 30. But as you can see, Jess gets a bit confused here. Luckily, there is no one behind. If there was though, this could very easily be a serious fall.
spots the sign really early here, checks the mirrors, signals, and takes good lane position. Again, really well done. So as you heard, she's contemplating going into the gap that's ahead. Yes, she can fit. There would be enough space for Tyson Tarmac. Would it penalise her for not going? No. It's not a big enough gap for the examiner to be concerned. So, not an issue. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when somebody nicks your space? Honestly, don't let it get to you. It's not a problem. Let it go. It makes no difference to your life at all, especially on the test. You're not in a rush. And this is your first mock test, isn't it? Yeah. Hi, can you tell? No. <laughs> You're doing all right so far. So ideally, we should be in the middle lane. Both the middle and the right lanes are for the A10 to go straight. Just stays in the right lane, and that's not an issue. It all depends on what happens later. Up ahead, you can see some yellow signs, and they show that there's a contraflow because of roadworks. And the sign shows that to go on the A10, you should be in the left lane. Just stays in the right lane here. Not so much of an issue, it depends on what happens next. Just to clarify, she does say that she feels like she's made a mistake here. Just do whatever you think is correct. Oh my god, I get a signal! Not quite the mistake that I was expecting her to say. That is what we call in the industry a fluke. She's put a right indicator on for what reason we do not know. Was she intending to go right? Did she forget uh, to go straight? Doesn't require an indicator. But what she is telling people is correct for what she is doing. And therefore the examiner could not mark her down for this.
following the sign for the A10, but we are still following the sign for Chesington. change here is late so this would be marked down as a driver fault for planning. say this before You've been told. do not <laughs> fail your own driving test let the examiner make the decision because as you can see she is now dwelling on what's happened before and even though it wasn't a driver fault let alone a serious she will now start to make more mistakes because of the worry of what's happened before just let it go concentrate on your drive because you can still very easily pass as you can see here she has only been given one driver fault so far. We're going to finish the independent drive oh, right. in a bit. So. Okay, so that's the end of the independent drive for the moment. What I'd like you to do is turn left into the car park, which is just here. Okay, oh, yeah. it's very tight. Just take your time. You're going to go past the car wash on the left hand side. So you're going to go past that pin. just picks up a driver fault for having to reverse remember it's not an issue it's just a driver fault or a minus don't worry about it just opens the door she can see she's in so leave it alone if it's in it's in don't overcomplicate it if it's not in fair enough make the adjustment but you can see she does what I call a boredom adjustment so she just makes the car move a little bit just to make it feel like she's doing something it wouldn't get marked down on the test but it's unnecessary
Happy with that? Come on. Okay, thank you. So, what I'd like you to do now is reverse the car so the back of the car goes to the left, please. So and then we'll exit the car park the same way as we came in. This is the roundabout junction that catches a lot of people out that we were talking about before. Now you can see that there's a give way line ahead on the roundabout which is why these cars are stops. And you can see on the left there's a white 4x4. Now she looks left here and that white 4x4 is far enough away that the observation is very late. So she gets a driver fault for observations at junction. Luckily, because of the 30 sign, she hasn't been over 20 for long enough for it to be a serious. She seems to be getting away with it at the moment, doesn't she? Would that be a fail if you go like five miles per hour? Not five, but like two or three. If you correct it quickly enough, it's not an issue. Um, you didn't really have enough time to keep it going above the speed of that, for that small amount though, either, for it to have been a major fault. this roundabout we can see the white car is a blocker as was the truck so it should have been going here this oncoming vehicle is again another blocker so this would be a driver for the hesitation <laughs>
to her left. First exit. think she could have gone there so there is a massive truck and as you can see they are taking the same exit as we are going to take remember just because you're in the left lane and that truck was in the right lane does not mean you can go because they might be coming from the junction opposite turning right which is why they're in the right lane so as you can see if she did go there she would have got taken out by that truck so do not go if there are any vehicles on your right no matter what lane they're in pre-lesson she said that she coasts quite a lot so I gave her a little exercise on finding what we call the catch point now if you've watched the video on turning into roads in a manual vehicle you would have seen this so all you do is you brake early then change down the gear earlier than you are normally doing then bring the clutch up to the bite point height while still braking by doing that it smooths the gear change and eliminates the chance of a stall because you've got plenty of time to then bring the clutch up fully before I'm not in first, am I? I can't say anything. And yes, she wasn't in first gear, she was in second. But because she used the gas, brought the clutch out to the bite point and allowed the car to take itself, it's not an issue. And the roundabout ahead, turn right, second exit. And yes, that was a serious for normal driving position. Kind of soon. So this is quite worrying. You know when you said to me, you know when I said, oh, let's do like three days before my test, and you said no. You're really right. Because I would be crying right now. It just gives you this. Yeah, now you can see you've got some time to think. Yeah, so. definitely. I'm just about to go over for sure. <laughs> Just think, if somebody ran out in front of your car, what would you do? Brake and clutch. 
neutral, do that. Okay? Yeah. So get the car to stop as quick as you possibly can. No mirror checks, just... That's it. Okay? Yeah. Um, remember, before you then pull away, you look around Bad the car. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so whenever you're ready, yeah. drive on. I'm going to look over my shoulder. When I say stop, I want you to stop the car as quickly as you can. Okay? For those of you which have watched my video on how to do the emergency stop correctly, remember use the brake first and then clutch at the last second. By doing that you will stop a lot quicker, but by doing brake and clutch at the same time it will not get you marked down on the test. Remember though, using brake and clutch at the same time is a pet hate of mine. Follow the road ahead. Stop. <laughs> Thank you. And drive. How is that? That's safe. What would you say? I think that was okay for the first time. Yeah. examiner will say that and the reason for that is because they don't want you to slam on the brakes next time they say thank you to somebody okay so it's not that you've done it good or bad it's just simply to say we're not doing it again so don't panic the next time I lift my hand up. Just maintains really good lane position through this roundabout. A lot of people get caught out by straight lining there. Just to give you a bit of a heads up, the sign here is quite late. We're turning right on this roundabout.
wondering, there is a vehicle on our left hand side at the moment, which is why she's in the right lane. Leaving you to okay. round about our head, we're turning left, first exit. Oh, van behind us beats is because there is nothing on our right hand side so that would be a driver fault for hesitation. Now she could have been a bit more fancy there and done another lap around the roundabout to take the correct exit but by doing this is not a problem at all. As you can hear she has not stalled here but if you're unsure look at your rev gauge if you can see that the rev gauge is above zero the engine is switched on if it's at zero it's off Speed has crept up here before the sign, so that's a driver fall for use of speed. having complications with the indicator she's hesitating to go remember if the indicator turns itself off it's because the steering wheel is at the cancellation point so just add or take away a little bit of steer and that will fix the fault and then the indicator will stay on Okay, Jess, so how do you feel that that went? Okay, well, I definitely failed, definitely. Okay. Um, serious faults, maybe like three, okay. four, and then mine is definitely over 15, I think so. Okay, so why do you feel that you got three major faults? Why do you feel that you got so okay. many minors? Well, majors would have probably been I hit the clock, the curb. Okay. Like literally skidded. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did I do? There was several times I swerved out my lane. 
and oh, well, I, I hope you agree with me. I'm not just incriminating myself. <laughs> um, and you're just other things like accumulations of the same thing, probably. Okay. So I got you in for ten driver faults, so ten main uh, minors. Okay. And I got you in for one major fault. No way. Because you're hitting the curb. <gasps> So if I didn't hit the cover, I would have passed. You would have passed. <gasps> Guys. Now, this is a really good lesson to learn, okay? Don't fail yourself, okay? Wow. I've said this in the video before, okay? Let the examiner do the job. Don't let yourself do mm -hmm. the job, okay? Yeah. Because when you made one mistake, they all started to pour in. <laughs> do you know when it, it, um, it hit, when we were at the traffic light for Cheson? And I was looking at the sign and you said that you're doing well so far. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. Then it all just came crashing down. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing that up until the like the roundabout that we where we were supposed to have gone straight second exit, so following yeah, the sun the eight and Chesham, we missed the exit. You could see your anxiety started to kick in. Mm -hmm. Okay? And remember, if you go the wrong way, it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. But you started to really dwell on the fact that you've gone the wrong way. Okay, um, then at the next roundabout, I said, so where are we going on this roundabout? And you didn't really know. Okay, and it's because you were still stressing so much about the last roundabout that you wasn't thinking, right, where am I going on this roundabout? Mm -hmm. Okay, forget it, it's happened. Yeah. Okay, you've been redirected. All right. Now, the hit in the curb, like we've said, too far over to the left hand side, obviously, and it was because you saw the oncoming car and you moved more than you needed. Like we said at the time, use your parking marker. It's a good way of judging how close you are to the curb. Mm -hmm. This is a new car to you, okay? Yeah. Um, so it is getting used to. But this car is narrower than the car that you're learning in already, yeah. okay? So um, the car just is learning in is a Fiesta, I think it is. Yeah. Um, so it's slightly wider than this car. Um, now the driver faults, roundabouts, hesitation, numerous occasions. So you've got an oncoming vehicle, um, which is going straight, you're turning right, you've got priority over them. Wait, uh, oh, for mini ones? Yeah, any roundabout. Mini roundabout. If you're turning right, you've got priority over the oncoming vehicle. You're crossing their path. They're not crossing yours. Oh, okay. Okay? If you were turning right into a side street, then priority. you give way to the oncoming. But remember, it's different for roundabouts. Is okay? that for big ones as well? Yep. Okay. Roundabouts are all the same rule. The only thing that's different with bigger roundabouts is that you exit signal, okay and you can have numerous cars turning right at any time on a big mm. roundabout whereas on a mini roundabout only one vehicle is allowed okay. to turn right at any time um there was an observation minor and this is the junction that i said this is the one that catches a lot of people out at the beginning of the test is the pond roundabout so we did the head first bay park then oh, we yeah. came out of that car park and asked you to turn left and then right at the roundabout mm -hmm. there's a give way line on that roundabout Okay, and you did look, and there was a white car coming from the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. You were able to get there before them, but it was close. But I your observation was very late. Late, okay. If that car left their house probably a second earlier, <laughs> I would have been on the dual control. Yeah, okay. There was a giveaway line for pe cars coming that way. You give way to people coming onto the roundabout. Oh, and I was going like that. You were turning um... right. And that's why that roundabout is one to remember. You'll see it on the on the actual video. Okay, okay so it's called cool. the Pond Roundabout at Chesant. It's mm -hmm. a notorious one for failing people. It's the only roundabout that I know of where you have to give way to people coming onto the roundabout. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and that's why it's really important to look at signs. Signs were catching out a couple of times. So there was at the beginning of the test where you said, is this is a 20 or a 30. Then you saw the sign that had 30 in LEDs and it wasn't illuminated. And you were like, oh, it's 30. Oh, actually, no, it's not 30. Now it's 30 as you got through it. Yeah. Now, it wasn't illuminated, which basically tells you that it wasn't a 20 previously. Oh. It's for school zone. Oh. So if it's school time, you'll have a 20 sign before, which is illuminated. And oh. then when you get to that sign, it will be illuminated 30 to say oh. that the speed limit then changes. Because it wasn't illuminated, it wasn't 20 in the first place. It was 30. It was just 30 the whole time. So I was literally not, I was going so slow for no reason. You basically. were driving a bit OAP, <laughs> like, yeah, that's it, okay? I think you went too easy on me. Uh, well, 
there was no one behind there was then a car approaching but you did get your speed up so mm. again it's not me being easy it's just you being a bit lucky, lucky. <laughs> okay so i can only mark down what i see yeah. and there was thought process behind it um Normal driving position, yeah, a little bit of a drift on one occasion. It mm -hmm. was addressed. Um, also, when you're doing your indicator, sometimes the indicator's turning off, and this happens sometimes when you're coming up to um, an approach to a roundabout. So you put turn on the steering wheel, and then you were trying to put the indicator on and it kept on turning itself off. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because the when you turn the steering wheel and then you straighten it up, the indicator turns itself oh. off. Right. Now, if the steering wheel is at the angle of the cancellation point, mm -hmm. that's why it keeps spring loading. Yeah. So a way to remedy that is just put a little bit more steer on or a little bit steer off, and then the indicator will stay on. Yeah, you only have to change the degree of angle by like five degrees, it will fix the problem, mm -hmm. okay? Um, also, another one that I just wanted to quiz you on is the pedestrian crossing. So you had a pedestrian crossing which uh, was flashing amber. Oh yeah. And you were like, what's it gonna do yeah. next? I was like, what's happening? <laughs> what is that flashing amber? Now I know it means it's about to turn green. It is about to go green. But and what does it's... a flashing amber mean? Get ready to go. Okay, so a flashing amber is a pelican crossing. And a flashing amber means that you can go as long as no one else is crossing. Oh, right, okay. So if there was somebody crossing, then you have to wait. Okay. If there's no one crossing, you can go. You do not have to worry about the green one. Mm. Okay, so a little bit of a highway code yep. check that's needed for My that one. Test has been, I did it so long ago, don't really remember stuff. <laughs> Definitely need to go through yeah. it because remember <laughs> that's your rule book. Yeah, you know? so it's really important that you know it and also keep in touch with it because it will change every year. There will be some new things to it. Okay. Um, but all in all, it was a good drive. Couple of silly things that needs to be addressed. Um, roundabouts in particular. Roundabouts. The coasting wasn't an issue. It was a bad. No. Okay, that's great. There was only one occasion where you put your clutch down before you broke, but it wasn't actually a problem enough to mark down. Okay, because okay. the interval between the clutch going down and the brake was pretty tight. Okay. So the car did slow down pretty much straight away. Okay. Um, but yeah just get used to the width of your vehicle I dare say that in your car you probably wouldn't have had so much of the same issue um, no. but, <laughs> and the funny one was when you told all of our viewers remember use an indicator did, yeah? I got a minor for that right no no oh why my God. you tell us why did she not get a minor for that no. what direction were we supposed to be going initially straight ahead do we indicate for straight no oh ah. my God. <laughs> Oh, luckily you then did stick a right indicator on to do a right turn because yeah. you went in the wrong direction. So you got away with that one as well. Oh, okay. well I got so lucky. <laughs> but you can see again, it's condemning yourself yeah. rather than the examiner condemning you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hope that video has helped. I hope that mock test has helped you yes, as definitely. well. Um, and as always, if you do want to do a mock test, contact us on Numero Uno website, so Numero Uno dot London, um, or give us a call on 079-8558-6975, and you could be my next victim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so for good. watching. Bye, guys.